hope your week was a good week. I hope your week was also busy because the Lord blesses the labors of our hands. So when our hands are busy, then we can ask the Lord, now that my hands have done so much, I'm expecting from you too. Amen. Looking at you and your faces, apart from the fact that I cannot know when you are smiling, you look good. Um, but because we need the smile of each other, may God deliver us from corona so that we can hug one another, high five one another. Woo! We are looking forward. And I told you that when they will lift it, you see who to celebrate. Upper. Ha. Kutatoka vumbi kwa tiles. Na unaona kaka kuna kukuagi na vumbi kwa tiles. Amen. We, we are going on from the book of Joshua. And uh, the book of Joshua is so exciting. Um, my daughter had asked me, is it a series? I said, no. But, I, I, but it is. <laughs> uh, today we want to look at prepar preparing to enter into your canon. You, you, you see, one of the things that I know we normally do on a regular basis is preparation. Even you that are listening from home, maybe when you woke up, you are to prepare so that you can get the link. And some of you at home, you are still wonderfully and fearfully made and dressed. Uh, maybe uh, even shower, not yet, but ready for the word of God. But preparation, maybe a, a mug of tea, uh, maybe some guashi somewhere. Um, but you have prepared yourself for, for it. Um, if I sleep the previous night without knowing what I will wear, I normally have a problem. I don't know about you, Catherine. You wake up in the morning. If you had not set your mind what you're going to wear, hey, si unajiangalia kwa mira, ya it okay. Tena unajiangalia tena, ha it okay zei. But if you sleep the previous night ready, uh, you wake up, and I normally wake up and Ali says, umeva ume upe sana. The, the secret is the previous night. In your mind, you are already dressed. So preparation is key, and um, even entering into our canon, your canon, you need to be prepared. Uh, and and um, that's what we are going to look to and pick a couple of principles that can help us also as we seek to enter the promised land. And getting you back to where we finished, we left some memorials. And uh, those memorials, we left them so that we can one was to, to declare that God has been faithful. And the second one was to declare, though it cannot be seen, we pass through this Jordan. So there is a memorial in the middle of that, lake, of that river which says, although nobody can see it, in my heart, I'm so blessed that God delivered me from these waters of River Jordan. And we said it would be so wide at a certain time of harvest. And God was so gracious, he stopped it 20 kilometers away or 20 miles away so that the people as they crossed over, none of them would see those heaps of water. And again, there were so many. There were two million people. They needed time without fear. Preparing to enter into your canon. So the, the passage that we, we, we are in, uh, we, we get into a place where uh, the children of Israel, as they are on the other side, the Lord, want, first of all, the Lord had delivered them from many things. If you, if you want to have a, re, a, a recap, he delivered them from the hands and the land of Egypt through many miraculous signs and wonders, actually ten of them. Then the Lord has led them through a harsh wilderness that saw them move and God will bless them miraculously. That even the shoes that they wore and the clothes that they wore, they never got torn up up to that point. Another miracle that God did for them was that he fed them with manna. 
He gave them chicken or quail to eat. He did some provision for them. They do not do anything. You just obey God and manna is there, quail is there. He protected them from their enemies. There was no enemy that could go close to them. He did protect them from their enemy. And like we were told in the first service, there was some protection both in the day and in the night. Light for the day, cloud, light, light for the night, cloud for the day. And anybody that was on the cloud was saved from the, the, the sun that was hot. He even allowed, the, as I said earlier, their clothes to last the whole time of the, their wandering. He gave them his law to instruct them in the ways of the Lord that would govern their lives. God was so gracious. And I think sometimes it's good for us to sit back and write down the things that God has done for us. Because it is important. Because many people forget. And these are no exception. They kept on forgetting what God had told them. They kept on forgetting, not knowing. what God, what did you do? They would forget that they, God delivered them. They would forget. And they would still go back. They wanted to go back to, to Egypt. All the time when they had a problem, they wanted to go back to Egypt. So the days of wandering are over and they have crossed over the other side. But for them to start conquering, to start winning, to start getting possession of what was there, they needed some preparation. And as I said earlier, you prepare the shoes that you're going to wear. So we, sometimes we know when you had not prepared because the shoes and everything you have, they are not matching. That's okay, especially brothers. Amen, amen, brothers. But uh, when you prepare, you, would, you have all that. But uh, sometimes the shirt and so on is not matching with this and not matching with that. But brothers, we are always forgiven by our sisters. But our sisters will be very particular. The earrings, are they matching with the necklace? The necklace, is it matching with, you know, and so on. So you look at, um, and that reminds me when I was a Matatu uh, pilot, and I was going to Australia every now and then. I'll go to Australia and back. There was a man that I admired. I did not know him, but I thought he was a unique man. If he wore a blue suit, he would have a blue shoes. A blue suit, blue tie, Blue suit, blue shoes, blue socks. Red. He would have a red shoes. And he used to pass by. And we would all look at him. And wonder, Uyu, anaendaka majua maninini? But he was so particular. Almost thinking, via to begin a lipaka robulak. Really. Nyekundu, ili itoke vire irivyo. But we used to admire him. You would not miss him in the city. And people would say, Ukiona yu jamaa mepita, uangalie saa, ni saa mbili. Because he used to walk around Harambe Avenue and I was in Gill House. Kwa hivyo kiangalia saa, uona jamaa mevuka, metoka bus station, amekuja, mevuka, tomboya, sasa anavuka moi, uangalie saa. Takua saa mbili. Preparing even to decide he will wear yellow. Because he had all clothes. Black, yellow, pink, red, green, all colors. I think you, you, you really need to prepare if you, you don't want to, to, to mess. Um, but when new wives are not looking at us, sometimes we dress with socks that are also torn. Like you discovered a whole minister had the torn socks. So preparing is important, how you prepare for whatever you are preparing yourself for. The preparation part is very, very important. I'm, I'm picking from uh, chapter number uh, five, and I'm looking at uh, a couple of verses, and then we will 
I will look at seven verses. Now let me look at 12 verses. Let's look at 12 verses. Please give us those scriptures, the 12 verses, and then we will... Um, all right. And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the other side of Jordan, westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their heart melted, neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. At that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, Make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. And Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the heel of the four skins. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. All the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war died in the wilderness, by the way, after they came out of Egypt. Now all the people that came out were circumcised. But all the people that were born in the wilderness, by the way, as they came forth out of Egypt, them they had not circumcised. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness, till all the people that were men of war, which came out of Egypt, were consumed, because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord, unto whom the Lord swore that he would not show them the land which the Lord swore unto their fathers that would give us, a land that floweth with milk and honey. And their children whom we raised up in, the, in their state, them Joshua circumcised, for they were uncircumcised, because they had not circumcised them by the way. And it came to pass when they had done circumcise, circumcising all the people that they abode in their places in the camp till they were whole. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you, wherefore the name of the place is called Rolled Away or Gilgal unto this day. And the children of Israel and Captain Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at even in the plains of Jericho. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn in their self same day. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna anymore, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. A number of principles that we get from here which you and I can learn is number one, from verse one to seven, we must take the step of consecration. We had said earlier that Joshua is telling the children of Israel, sanctify yourself or cleanse yourself. He was telling them to prepare to cross Jordan. But now they have closed Jordan to take their position they need to consecrate themselves. They need to, 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 to renew their covenant with God. The first command that the Lord gives to Israel is that all the men must be circumcised. And all the men were to be circumcised, and which meant they would not go to war until they were healed. And just as the children of Israel were required to remove their bodies, a piece of flesh, which is a sign that was a part of the covenant, we must remove also in our lives anything that stands between total surrender to the Lord, which is important. The Bible is clear that there are times when you and I must engage in spiritual surgery in our lives. Colossians 3 verse 1 to 8. If you then be raised with risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affections on the things above, not on the things on the earth. For we are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life shall appear then, 
shall you also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication and cleanness, in order that affection, evil, concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which you also walk some time when you lived in them. And finally, verse 8. But now ye also put off all these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy, communication out of your mouth. I think it is important for you and I to know there are things that we are also commanded as believers. The first set of things that Paul is telling the people to do away with are things that you and I did when we were not Christians. Things that are not right and they are not good. But as we come to the Lord, he's telling now, now that we have known the Lord, we are not worshipping idols. He needs us now to take some things that are very... Malice. And nobody will see it, but you can be malicious. Blasphemy. Nobody can see it, but you could be blaspheming even God. Anger. You could smile at me, but at the back, you are doing certain things to me. Nobody can see. But if we want to possess the land that is there for us, our canon, we have to deal even with those things that nobody can see. 2 Corinthians 6. If you read the whole of that up to 2 Corinthians, you, you will discover there are certain things that are there in verse, even chapter 7, verse 1. But looking at verse 17, if we look at verse 17 of 2 Corinthians 6, and then move uh, to verse 1 in chapter 7, we will find the following words. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part has he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement are the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and daughters. Says the Lord Almighty. Having therefore these promises. Dearly beloved. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. In other words. The writer is telling us. Because we have already gone to this. And we want God to bless us. There are certain things that we are going to do. Because we have these promises of God. There are things that we need to work in our lives. The uncleanness, the filthiness of the flesh. So that we can perfect our holiness and in the fear of the Lord. If it does not glorify God. You can underline that. If it does not edify the church or yourself. Or if it does not help you grow in the Lord, then it needs to go. Just pull it out of you. First Corinthians 6 and verse 12, I, I used to quote this verse when I was growing up in high school. All things are lawful unto me. Yes, I'm free. I'm a child of God. But all things are not expedient. They are not worthy. All things are lawful to me because I'm a child of God. But I will not be brought under the power of any because I have to have power over them. So there are certain things that you think this is not harmful. Oh, it could be. But even that which is not harmful to you because you are a child of God, you have to deal with it and deal with it well. Circumcision to the Jews was a reminder that they were a marked 
people. So what God was saying, for 40 years you are not marked. I protected you, but you are not marked. But now I want to put a mark on you. They were to never forget that they were the servants of the living God and that they were under obligation to obey him in all things. Therefore, circumcision was to be outward reminder of an inward work of faith. But listen in Deuteronomy 10, 16. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and don't be more stiff-necked. In other words, he turns it around. He said, Unaweza katwa ngozi. Lakini hiyo ngozi yako bado unatenda dhambi. Toa moyo ukatwe tena. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wadugu wa kiroho. Amen. Bado mnampenda Yesu. Eh? In our case, a similar truth is at work. Colossians 2.11 we have been circumcised in the heart in whom you also are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Circumcision of Christ. And this happened when you and I joined the Lord Jesus Christ because our conversion when it took place, even our conversations changed. Colossians 2 verse 13 and 14 and you being dead in your sins and death and, death and circumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all your trespasses, blotting out the hard writing of ordinance that were against us, which were contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it on the cross. Nailing it on the cross. Our old nature have been judged. Our old nature has been condemned by God. Therefore, as believers, we need to separate ourselves from sins of the flesh. Something great has happened in us. The internal work of salvation will result in the outward work of sanctification. If it has happened in my heart, it will be seen in my physical. So if you are saved then, you are supposed to live like you are saved. Kama umeokoka, ishi kama mtu alieokoka. So the message here was, do you want your canon? You have to get back your covenant with God. And to get a covenant with God, even Abraham, though old, he was to be circumcised so that he can get into God. And we are saying, physical circumcision. When in what wangapi wakona physical circumcision and I behave kama watoto. Now we're going to pretend when I part wa kure ka, when I part wa kure gara, rafu wana weko kwa mkokoteni, wana sugushu wa town, kuna fanyo wa mchango kidogo. Those are kikuyus. They, they behave very, very interesting. When I chuku wa mtu wana weka kwa gari, ya mkokoteni, wamemtua nguo, wana changa changa. You know, sometimes you wonder, really? And yet these men could be mature than those that have gone to hospital or, or those that have... No wonder the Bible shifts very quickly and saying, wacha! Toa moyo! Wacha moyo waka utairi! Dio. Bwana Yesu asifia. Bwana Yesu asifia. We have ropes here. And we don't emphasize on circumcision. We emphasize on other things because we know there are values. And then we tell the people that want to do circumcision, now you can go do it. But we want to deal with the daughter person because we know what that means in our life. So we must take the step of consecration. And the way I'm going to consecrate myself, I'm going back to hear what God has told me as a promise into my life. Number two, we must, take the, we must take the step of confirmation. Now, the children of Israel, if you go back to the verse that we read, it tells us even the kings, the Amorites, when they heard that these guys have crossed now Jordan, there was no strength left. These are the same people we thought they are finished in the wilderness. You know, because when they were coming, 
They saw them come and they saw them turn. But now they have come and this time even Jordan cannot stop them. So they were so scared. Now, what does God want me to do? He wants me to confirm that I know him and the power of his resurrection and the power that he carries. That I know him. Now you see, at the time of circumcision, they can do nothing. But at the time of circumcision, God has come to protect them. Israel is camped in the heart of the very enemy territory. After they have been succumbed as every male in the nation of Israel, he is temporarily disabled and rendered unable to fight. Their obedience to God's command for them to be circumcised was a supreme act of faith. And they had to do it willingly. They had to do it trusting the Lord to protect them until they were healed. I want to tell you this. Even the children of Israel were now afraid of God. Oh, because these guys were born in the wilderness. They had not known the Red Sea. So when they saw it, they were also afraid. So in other words, when they were told Pangalaini and Joshua and Caleb, I guess, Toa Ikitu and, uh, you know, Kwenda Ukapone, you know, everybody is, you know, and they, they all were there. They, they are getting to a place, they are also afraid of that God. And what I'm talking to you, my brother, my sister, if you haven't gotten to that place where you don't only fear him and obey him and honor him, you are at all at what he can do. Then you can relax in him. These guys now are ready because they have gotten to a place where they know it is not by my power. There is another power that God does. And friends, that is when God comes in and does a miracle for us. When we can, we put our faith in him. We put our faith in him. Lord, to protect him. They have gone to a place they know that even success is not there. Let me say this. When God puts you into something and God leads you into something, he will not only protect you, he'll provide for you. Noah, God sustained him and his family. Why? Because he obeyed God. There was no worry about the flood. He was saving God's hand. How about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? God kept them. Why? Because they knew, even in their fairy fairness, God is able to deliver us. And even if he doesn't, they had that faith in God. Brothers and sisters, as you prepare yourself for God to do anything for you, you have to get to a place where you know it, and in your knower you know it. That if God wants to do it, he can do it. I have been telling people this, and this is true. Nobody dies because of sickness or accident. Otherwise, anybody going to hospital will die. But they go to hospital and come out. Why? Their time is not. Some of the relatives, and then, after a month, anaishi miaka mingi. Mungina anapigwa na gari. Gari ina roll, anatoka. Akinaekesa na nani. Walikuwa, tulienda huko. Gari yao ikaribika, ikawa written off. Lakini jamawa katoka. Na mtu mungine. Anaenda kuchoma nyama. Hapa kamakis. Halafu, namuambia mwenzake, reketuwa betu, daika thate, kaya maka hii. The one who bought, who bought it, who was to pay for it, when he disappeared, those that are menace, he died. He never came back even to pay. Now you wonder. Query. Or, I meet a friend and we're having tea with him. He has no problem. At five, he's dead. So when you are told, what do you think? Aye. Then I discovered, you don't have to die because you are sick or unwell. It is what the Bible says, it is appointed to men. If you are a man, then you have an appointment. <laughs> there was someone who thought he can run away from death. So he met death in the city of Nairobi. 
And death greeted him and told him, you, you still remember we have an appointment? The guy ran. Kabisa mbiyo mbaka naivasha. Wakakutana na kifo tuwa kama, oh, umetembea naivasha, but you still remember our appointment? Eh? Ah, katoka uko biyo mbaka Mombasa. Sasa wakio Mombasa, alikuwa appointment yake, ilikuwa kufie Mombasa. <laughs> oh my goodness. When... Yep. Even Israel, the way they were protected by God, when they shed the blood and they put it on their rentals of their doors, because it was God and they had obeyed him. Daniel is put in the lion's den and they are hungry. But for the first time hungry lions, they saw another lion of Judah in there, covering Daniel. And they would not do anything. They kind of stayed there cool. But the king thought, Hebu Nijaribu, threw in the guys that had taken Daniel there. They never landed. That's what the Bible says. Because those guys were hungry. It's only that when you are with the tribe of, when you are with the lion of the tribe of Judah, you are safe. Amen. I don't know how I can say this. Look at Paul. He is attacked. His body has a problem, but he lives until his time to die comes. Nothing can stop that. What I'm trying to tell you is that you can depend on the Lord because he's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Listen to what Jeremiah says, that at 2 verse 17. Oh Lord God, behold thou hast made the heaven and the earth by their great power and stretched out um, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Jeremiah 32, 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? He is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Can you put for us Ephesians 3.20? He is the same God. Ephesians 3.20. Ephesians 3.20. He is the same God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. He is that one. He will never change. So get back to the covenant. Get back to the promises that God has given to you. And now affirm it, confirm it. I know the Lord will make a way for me. I know the Lord will make a way for me. Thirdly, contemplation is important. We must take the step of contemplation. The term reproach of Egypt brings to mind two thoughts. First, it refers to the fact that the males who came out of Egypt were not circumcised. Therefore, they had reproach. Hence, they were not part of God's covenant and he would not fight their battles. Because they had no covenant. You cannot tell God to fight for you and you have no covenant. There must be some covenant between you and God for God to wage war on your behalf. The term also refers to two events during Israel's wilderness wandering. The first one is Exodus 32 verse 1 to 12. This is when the children of Israel made a golden calf and worshipped it. It was a reproach to God. Whatever else you have worshipped is a reproach to God. So you have to do with it. It's a reproach. The second one is Numbers 14. They are sent to go and spy the land. They come back and they don't believe God. They believe anything else but not God and his promise. It is a reproach to God. So on both occasions, the Lord threatened to destroy the nation of Israel and start afresh with Moses. But Moses will tell God, don't. If you do, what will, be the, the, what will Pharaoh say? That you brought them out here so that you can kill them. Many of God's children, you and I included, we are still living under reproach of Egypt. You may be living with the shame of things you did before you came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Or you may be ashamed of times when you have failed the Lord since you have been saved. Or there may be, you may be guilt 
or ashamed of some issues that you are presently, right now when I'm talking, right now, going through. And some of you, you are living under some constant stub of self-condemnation. Always. But the Bible says, there is therefore now no condemnation. If I'm in Christ, there is therefore now no condemnation. God is telling Israel that yesterday is forever gone and they are to walk a newness of life. They have gone and they have renewed their covenant. It's like their reproach in the wilderness is no longer there. God has taken their reproach away from them. And the same thing can happen to you and I if we don't cover our sins. Proverbs 28, 13 says, He that covered his sin shall not prosper, but whosoever confesses and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Finally, we must take the step of celebration. And I want to, as I bring to a close, these guys, they need to get to a place of celebration. You know, remember, they, they have been circumcised. So they have just healed. They have something they can celebrate God with. Yani, tulikuwa hivyo. Na buwana umetuponya. Saa tuko ready. You celebrate. It is time now to turn around and celebrate the Passover. Because you see, they could not celebrate the Passover. The only time they celebrated the Passover was just before they got to Kadesh Bania. And it is the place where they refused to enter into Canaan, because they say there are giants there. Before they got to that place, Kadesh Baniya, they had a Passover. That was the only Passover they had. But when they went into the wilderness for 40 years, it is not recorded anywhere that they did a Passover. But now that they have been circumcised, they are over on, into Canaan, they have crossed Jordan, it is time for them to celebrate. Now some of these are celebrating things they don't know. Joshua has to tell them and Caleb has to tell them. But the fact that they have crossed Jordan is a reason to celebrate. We must take the step of celebration. We find Israel celebrating the Feast of Passover. The first observed in Egypt, Exodus 9, 9 to Exodus 14, when God was dealing with them. They were to celebrate. Oh, I want to ask the believers that are listening to me, whether, whether you're at home, if you want to celebrate, see what God has done. Whether somebody is giving you a testimony. Oh, in the wilderness we had manna. And you see, as they celebrated during the Passover, anything that they received for free ended. Yeah, ended. Hakuna manna tena. Sasa ni kutafuta maindi, wakule maindi. Na walikula ili maindi likuwa imezeekea huko. Walikuwa mehave suatu wa huko, ni kuulize swali. Na kwa sabu haku na shamba, what happened? You know when you read the Bible, you have to see some things that are not written there. There are some guys who had planted maize across Jordan. When they saw these guys cross, they all disappeared and went away. So, maindi ni anani? See, the Bible was telling them, you are going to a land with the flower which is flowing in the milk and honey. You are going to a land where there are giants, of course, but you are going to have food that you never planted. Amen. That is our God. But as I celebrate the goodness of the Lord, anything that I got for free will come to, to an end, and I have to plow now with my hands because God blesses the labors of my hand. Celebration is important. So are you ready to enter into your canon? If you are ready to enter into your canon, go back to the covenant that God started with you. And, you know, remember the vows. Some of us gave vows very interesting. Bwana, ukinebariki, ire 10% nitakupa. Some of you even said this. Fast fruit. Fast. Fast. Na imekuhaunt because you had said the fast. And you know, truth be told, when the fast fruit came, the pockets were empty. So you told God, what a nikule hii. Sasa itakuwa fast, itakuwa the second fruit. 
Get back to your covenant. Get back to your covenant. You know, one time we received a very powerful sermon here that tukambiwa hata ile gari tumepeleka kuna gari ile ilikuwa ya kwanza haikuwa yako. Sasa gari yangu ya kwanza kalikuwa ka gari nilikuwa nimenunua 1018. Kalikuwa ka Morris Minor. Sasa hiyo kutoka kule Kaunda ametoka hiyo ni ile mtu anaingiaga yani you enter kwa sababu kana kufinya huko ndani so the preacher said go back and bring your first fruit of course the struggle was sasa ninapeleka rexton dio first fruit alihubiri vizuri akaturudisha huko eh hey, na nikaona watu watu walileta vitu hata kuna maproti <laughs> zililetwa First fruit. But let me tell you this. Anybody who obeyed that then, their lives, look at mine, changed. Because God is not a respecter of person. All what you need is to get back to the vows and the covenant that you had. And if you never promised them anything, blessed are you. But some of us, tuko na kiberebere na kiherehere mingi sana. Sasa, your words are going to ensnare you. No wonder some of you have been ensnared all this long. What you need to do, can I give you a, a simpler way? Come to me as your priest, and I will set you free. No, seriously, come to me as your priest, and I will set you free. Why should you be in bondage? Kuja uniambie, ninini hiyo ulimuahidi mungu. And I will tell you what to do. You know, if we are, we are Catholics, you would repeat the Lord's Prayer couple of times. But now that you are not, you are a Christian, I'll tell you what to do. I'll pray for you. But we have to set each other free. Oh, let me even be, make it better. Go to any of my pastors here. Let them pray with you. Let them release you from those bondage because there is a canon for you. Sasa kama umeambiwa hivyo. Do you want to stay again and are still under your condemnation? Come out of it. Get the freedom that God can give to us. I'm finishing. Some of us need to come before the Lord and remove anything from our lives that does not belong to ourselves and doesn't belong to God. Remove it. Some of us need to rely upon Him and Him alone. Not our families, not our finances, not our academics. We need to rely totally on him like the children of Israel when they were circumcised. Some of us will need to release our past and refuse to be burdened by what used to be because God has set us free. Some of us will need to remember the faithfulness of the Lord to us and our own promises to be faithful to him. Some of us we we'll need to come to Jesus Christ by faith so that we can be saved from our sins. Are you ready to take the steps that will allow you to enter into your canon? If you are, I think I want to pray for you. If you can stand from wherever you are, from wherever you are, just stand, let's pray for you. Remember some of you, you need to go back to your covenant and you need to be set free from the things that have held you back. Our Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I want to thank you. And I want to bless you because, Lord, the people that are listening to me, they are ready, they are preparing themselves to get that which is theirs. But first, dear Father, we know for you to fight our battles, we have to go back to our covenant relationship with you in the name of the Lord, and that is by paying our vows to you in the name of the Lord. We also know that, Heavenly Father, we have to contemplate what you can do. Dear Father, and some of us standing here, we have started contemplating what God you can do because you are a God and beside you there is none other. There are some here, dear Father, standing today and they want to confirm that beside you there is none other and you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that which appears to be a, a, a mountain right now in the name of the Lord, it will map before them in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Some of us, Heavenly Father, where we have reached, we need to celebrate. What are we celebrating? We are celebrating the doing of the Lord, the protection of the Lord, the healing of the Lord, the leading of the Lord. Because God, you have led us. For the children of Israel, it was 40 years in the wilderness. For us, dear Father, some of us are years, not 40 years, but some years. But Lord, we are declaring that our lives will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus, blessed be your holy name. I want to thank you that God, I can see change is coming. I can feel change is falling. I can see change it will push us to our next level in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, if it pleases you, change us, prepare us to conquer Jericho, to conquer any other obstacle, because we can do it in the name of the Lord. If you're here or at home and you're listening to us, I've said some of us, all what we need is to start by receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. I want you to pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. Make me your child. I desire to walk in you because I have a canon and I will go to my canon. Give me the grace and thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer from wherever you have prayed that prayer, remember God is ready to walk with you if you allow him. And there is a number on the screen. Call that number and somebody is going to pray with you in the name of the Lord. I pray that God is going to help you this week as you prepare for your canon. Remember, your canon is not like mine. Yours is different. So pursue yours. Don't pursue your brothers, your sisters, your whatever. Pursue yours. Let God give you the grace to pursue your canon. The Lord bless you and the Lord be with you. Amen, amen, amen.